Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. We have a fun and exciting show for you tonight. It's going to last a while, but we wanted to do kind of like a come and go event. Yeah. Um, that way, if you have stuff to do or you can't get on, it's okay. You can come back later. It's going to be all right. We'll <laughs> be here. Trust me. I know. <laughs> so Corey's got a fun project that he wants to quilt along with you. Um, the idea of doing it live was so that you could ask questions, mm -hmm. like ask anything, uh, the, the quilting question, the thread, the batting. I was going to say, yeah, stay in the quilting area. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can just, just definitely ask questions and then I'll be on the background answering them. Um, so, and we'll be asking Corey as he mm -hmm. goes too, if I don't have the answers, mm -hmm. but we're here with you for, for a while mm -hmm. until you don't want us anymore. A couple hours. Like when there's nobody <laughs> else there, we'll say bye. But, <laughs> um, but Corey's super excited about um, quilting. He's been planning this little peacock thing for a while, mm -hmm. drawing mm -hmm. it out, sketching it out on his iPad. And he'll kind of show you some of that stuff too. Kind of prep that, prep this, and just show you kind of how it goes. Everything okay? Everything's great. Okay. Um, yeah, and then in the meantime, when he's like, if he's in a segment that he's just like doing the fill-in work that's the same mm -hmm. stuff repetitive, then mm -hmm. I'll just take you guys on a tour around the store and you can ask me about products that we walk by. Well, there we go. So, um, uh, Thank you for everyone that is on right now live yes. watching with us. We love Yay. to see your comments. <laughs> um, and then I guess let's jump into it. Let's just get started. I think we can get ready and go into it. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. So let's go over to the machine okay. and let's take a look at what we are doing. All righty. So tonight I'm working on my ANOVA M24. Um, again, Diana will be re seeing the questions and she will um, ask them to me as they come up. And I've already done the border around the first part of this quilt right here. And I'm using a metallic thread to do that. I'm doing the light gold metallic by Superior. And I wanted to take you through the order of quilting. It was gonna take a little bit too much time to actually do it on live with you. So I wanted to go ahead and get it done so then I could walk you through it real quick so we could get into some more fun stuff. So what I'm gonna do is, let me put my needle down back here, there we go. Okay, so order of quilting in this was I did stitch in the ditch between the actual panel piece and the border and what I mean by doing that is I had no basting around the outside edges. I just laid the quilt top on the batting, tried to get it as straight as I could, and then I engaged my channel lock, and I did stitch in the ditch right here. We've talked about this a few times on After Hours, but I went ahead and stabilized it first to get this border perfectly straight. Because no matter how hard you put on your borders, no matter how hard you try to put on your borders, sometimes they might dog ear a little bit or they're not as straight as you want them to be. So if you baste the outside border first, then your inside border can have a wave to it. And there's, it's going to take you a lot of stretching and pulling to get this straight. I would rather do the stitch in the ditch here first, all the way down that full horizontal inside seam and then come and do the outside. Because I can always square up the outside. It's very hard to square up the inside once it's already done. So I did that stitching for that border all the way around. Uh, so again, throwing you through order of quilting. We did stitch in the ditch around the whole thing, and then I've done the uh, border quilting around the majority of it. I didn't finish it all off just in case we had time. Um, we could take a look at programming it in and going with that. Um, I am doing it at 14 stitches per inch tonight. Uh, you could probably max it out to 16 because of some of the quite tight quilt work we're doing. We might change it throughout as we go. Um, but right now we're working at the 14 stitches per inch. And just to throw something out there really quick. Um, if for some reason we lose connection because we are in a storm right now, tornado warnings and all kinds of stuff around us, um, but we are safe and everything's good. I should say watches, not warnings. Um, we will come back as soon as we can. But just know that if we do lose some type of connection, it's because of the weather, not us. <laughs> oh, thank you. I want to throw that out there. <laughs> cool. Um, I did also, because I always get questions, want to show you. Um, I plan out most of the custom quilts that I do on my iPad. Um, this is an app called Art Studio Pro, I think. I should have asked. <laughs> yeah, Art Studio Pro. Um, that's what I use. And it's available in the App Store. Um, I don't know about a, a Galaxy or a Samsung tablet. I just use an iPad. Um, but I uh, use it because I can do multiple different layers and I can change the color 
of those layers and I can play around with my pencil to get the idea of what I'm doing to give myself kind of a rough estimate of what I'll be doing. So I wanted to go ahead and take you through what we're going to be doing in this section. Before you get right started, here. we have a quick question. What's up? So uh, we have Patricia asked, how big is the panel? And did you do the entire border first or just the top border? Uh, Patricia, wonderful question. I don't know how big this panel is. It's, it's just not kind mine. of a normal size 24 by, uh, I think it's like 24 by 18. This is not 24 by 18. It's close enough. What kind of measurements are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is not 24 by 18. Please can't go break Madam, out the ruler. we are not shipping like, poster boards. I feel like... <laughs> this is, like, now i got to bring out the ruler. This is, like, maybe 24 by 44. Okay, well, close Where enough. Where did you get 24 by 18? I've seen it before. Yeah, not this one. <laughs> All right, and so then basically... Did you just do the top border? And you don't, you do do the, the top border first and you do the bottom border when you get to the bottom, right? I did what was in my available, wonderful question. I did what was in my um, available quilting area. I don't like to roll up quilt that hasn't been quilted yet. It gives me the heebie-jeebies when I see it start crumbling up. Um, so I just did what was available in my throat space. Uh, and then I just start, I rolled back so I could get back to here. And then Good you'll question. finish the rest when you go to, when you roll after that, As I right? roll, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you go back to showing the app. <laughs> okay, no big deal. That's what we're here for. Um, so I turned the picture so you could look at it the way we were, we're going to be quilting it. Um, and I'm using a green color. And since I have to look through a camera to do this, it's not my best work. But I'm going to do a little bit of ruler work right here. And we're going to come up and kind of just give this peacock feather some texture. Roll in give it a teardrop, and then come back with some texture down the same line, ruler work to here to the middle of the, golly, that's not, I, I promise you I quilt straighter than that line. Uh, ruler work to right there. Once you get to the middle of this design, you're gonna kind of fern it out. Why don't you turn around and just do it and I'll make sure the camera's on you. That way you don't have to do no, it I'm through good. the camera. I can, I can see it. You got it good? Yeah, okay. thank you, I'm good. And then you'll come back here and do the same thing again. Um, we are doing this again with metallic thread and just kind of accentuating what is already on the panel. We're not reinventing the wheel here. I um, mean, you're going to see that a lot tonight, just kind of going with what you already have. So I really like that you, there's that app available for mm -hmm. anybody that can just kind of go on there and just practice. Yeah, it makes it really, really nice. Okay, um, I've got this set. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my thread again. Uh, I've got my stitch regulator doing 14 stitches per inch. I've got metallic on top, but I'm doing a black bottom, uh, black micro quilter, excuse me, in the bobbin. Um, so that's always a good question that we get. Can you switch top and bottom threads? You definitely can. Uh, you're going to have a little bit of tension adjustment, so always be prepared for that. Uh, but once you get it set, it, it turns out looking really, really pretty. And Denise, he did load this long way so that way he could get more border done at once. So um, he will flip it to the other side to do the other border, right? Well, no, not no, on this one. Not on this one. On um, a normal quilt, you would. Normally, yes, I would. I would turn the quilt to do the borders because this quilt isn't super duper large. I'm okay working down, but nine times out of ten, I actually do like to turn the quilt to do it. My method behind my madness for keeping it uh, long ways was because this uh, peacock in the center, which we'll get to, oh, you can't see it, there it is. This peacock here in the center has really long, beautiful feathers that go all the way down the panel. And I wanted to be able to stitch those as continuously as possible and not have to stop and try to tie them together. Um, and the question was the name of the app again. Uh, Art Studio? Studio Pro. Art Studio Pro. Art Studio Pro is the one that I like to use. Um, I did totally forget to throw on my ruler base. <laughs> if I'm going to do ruler work, I need a ruler base on. Yes, definitely. Um, so I'm going to slap that on real quick, and then I think they're going to turn the camera so you can see how easy this ruler base goes on. Just a little shout-out Oh, yeah, I love that how it here. goes on. So we're just going to slide our ruler base on real quick, make sure our threads are on top of it, and plop it down. Super duper easy uh, to get that exactly where you want it on here. Okay, now I'm ready to pull up my threads. See, when I do this and I just record it, you I can, can make cut all that stuff and stop out. And <laughs> yeah, but now you are seeing the whole process. Okay. Um, if you do have a needle down function on your machine, I highly recommend you have it on so when the machine stops, it stops in the down position. Uh, that way it can pick up exactly where you left off. Uh, that way you're not trying to figure out, oh, did I get it right there or there? So I've got my 4x8 ruler, 
grip dots down on that. And I don't have to go very far on this, but at least I can get it started. So I'll get to right there, take my ruler, I stop the machine needle down, and then this is where the free motion gets to begin. So we're gonna head up, and then this, this is all extra. There's nothing in particular you have to follow. You're just doing it whatever you like. A little bit of a teardrop here, and then back and back. Head back down here, and then take my ruler and travel down. Move that away. Maybe give this a curl. We'll pause there and then keep coming down. Mom, can you make sure they're zoomed in enough to see what we're doing? Did she leave me? Oh, she left me, guys. <laughs> it's just you and I, 14 stitches per inch, and the machine. Coming back and forth as we go. Now I'm seeing a few little black dots. Um, that's my bobbin thread. And it's coming up, so it's either telling me my top tension is too tight or my bobbin tension's too loose. I'm assuming uh, my top tension's too tight, so I'm just gonna loosen it just a hair. So then those black dots will disappear from my bobbin thread. And again, we're traveling down and around here. And we're just curling in. Again, the fun part about this is, is you're just kind of accentuating what the panel has to offer. You are not reinventing the wheel here as you go. All the way. Coming in with that tight teardrop. Remember that design? We're gonna use that um, in our background quilting when we get to the inner cream portion of the panel. We're gonna bring that out of our arsenal once more to uh, showcase that. I love stopping with that needle down. coming back so we'll see if we can get her to zoom in for y'all so you can actually see what I'm doing yeah sorry I was trying to do a little post um, we had a quick question on which batting are you using and you're actually using Linda's choice batting which we can I'll show you that while he's doing that So we had a good question also on how did you decide your uh, stitches per an inch? Oh, really good question. Um, when it comes to stitches per inch, depending on what I'm working on um, is how I'll determine what's going to happen. So on this panel, because I was doing a lot of tight, intricate work, I didn't want to stick with industry standard, which is about 12 stitches per inch when you're doing your edge to edge quilting. I wanted to tighten it up just a little bit. Um, so I decided to hop up to 14. I might go up to 16 later on the quilt. Um, I try to stay pretty consistent all the way throughout the whole uh, quilting experience just so it looks the same equidistant wise. Um, but I might amp it up just to make the stitches look a little tighter. And what I mean by that is if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna uh, add pearls or anything onto the quilt or circles onto the quilt, um, I like to be able to make that a tighter stitch uh, so it comes out to be nice and smooth. Everything okay, camera woman? Yeah. Oh, okay. I had to get a step stool. Mm -hmm. Just 
there's that. I think I can do one more before my ruler base hits. One thing to keep in mind if you, when you are using a ruler base um, is to make sure that you've got your throat space planned out prior to actually quilting because you don't want to get into a little bit of a pickle when you're quilting and you hit a bar with that ruler base. So right there is good for me, so I will tie off. And a good tip for that is you could actually just put some painter's tape down or mark it somehow, right? Painter's tape or the ultimate marking pencil. Yeah. I meant to grab one of those before I got started and I didn't. Um, so you can grab either, again, painter's tape or that ultimate marking pencil to do that. Yeah, there you go. Just kind of give them an idea of what you're talking about, like to bring it all the way down to so, where you know your throat space is going to kind of end where you can not quilt anymore comfortably and then mark oh, it. Oh, I had a little bit of room. I guess I should have marked it. So right here is where the machine would have stopped. However, I couldn't get all the way to the end of this little feather fern here. So I would have stopped at this one. So that would have given myself, I would have taken my ultimate marking pencil and marked right there saying that's where I need to stop. A good visual stop so that way you don't hit it and run run into it. I mean, we've done that a dozen times. More times than I'd like to. <laughs> and then you have to unpick. Like to admit. So yeah, more just times a quick than mark. I'd like to. Uh, yeah, more times than I'd like to admit. <laughs> okay, um, so I've got that top little section done. So that's about where, oh my gosh, I totally skipped over one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, how did I miss that? I oh. missed this one right here. Well, let's, since go we're back. here. Gotta love it when you're live. Can't can't edit those you out. Can't edit that out. Man, <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up. All right, so we're coming back here to fix the little uh oh that we had. So I will tie off my threads real quick. They all said that hey, you missed a feather. I um, was you're watching. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Who <laughs> knows what I'm doing? Because he wanted to see if you guys were paying attention. Yeah, Good job. That, that was your pop quiz for the minute. So you guys passed. How did I miss that? I, I think it's when I was zooming in and out. Oh. And you got distracted. Mm. So Lisa, the quilting space on this is about 20 inches, Corey. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What was the question? The quilting area on the uh, Nova M24. The M24 is 21 inches. 21 inch quilting area. She had a question, she asked how big the quilting area was. Yeah, on the M24 it's 21. And do you happen to know the name of the panel? I know it was gifted to you, uh, but do you Well, know? it wasn't gifted to me, actually. It oh, was okay. a, It's a gift for me to quilt to then give back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, I, I, gotcha. I don't know the name of the panel at all. I'm sorry. I don't know the name of it or where it comes from. I'll have to try to search it up. But yeah, it was a... It was a gift for me to quilt, and then I get to give it back. How's that a gift, then? Because I get to use it on my show. I didn't have to piece it together. <laughs> it's a gift for me. Oh, that's true. Because no, I don't like to piece. So it was a win-win <laughs> situation for the group. Lisa said it could have been a design choice by you skipping that. See? Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Just watching out for me. Okay. Um, we're going to move. I'm going to work a little bit further right here. What do I want to do ditch work-wise first, actually? I'm trying to think. I want to do this outer portion. Okay, can we see this? Oh, you can't see anything. You got that camera really high on me. Yeah, we can see this right here. We'll start right here. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of stitch in the ditch work around the outside of this frame. I'm gonna go get a stool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have differences in height around here. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of stitch in the ditch work around this frame. The outer portion of the frame, it's probably really hard for you to see on camera, but it has a little bit of a metallic hue to it. So I want to go ahead and uh, give that a little bit, uh, kind of accentuate it a little bit. So I'm going to use a ruler and do a little bit of stitch in the ditch around the outside. You could, of course, free motion the stitch in the ditch if you want to. I don't know if I'm that brave. I might be that brave. Let's see. It's gonna be a little bit slower than I probably would do it. Eh, not too bad, actually. So just kind of locking that down as I go. You, if you have an applique helper, this would be the time to really use it. Actually, let's use an applique helper. So an applique helper um, gets onto the foot of the machine. The ones that we sell currently um, have a little bit of a larger hole. Um, so they might not fit all of the machines right now. Uh, we're working with the manufacturer to get that added to have different sizes. But what this is going to let me do is I can kind of slowly have more control over what I'm doing stitch in the ditch work wise. And I can kind of work around this outer frame as I go. 
and I might be losing you in camera. I am. Camera woman is here with a stool, which means she's going to be able to see everything now. You good? Okay, yep. please don't fall. <laughs> I, bet, I don't think this video is covered under our insurance. <laughs> so just taking this around as I go. It does not have to be perfect, but having one thumb in that applique helper, kind of a, applying extra pressure uh, from me stopping and going crazy uh, helps me. So I've got that, and then now I'm going to switch back to my 4x8 because I'm doing some straight lines around these sections. And then, actually, I'll get rid of the ruler so y'all can see it a little bit better. I still have to hold on to the machine at some point. All right, we're losing from the arm, so let's move this camera over for you. Okay. I don't know if you're going to be able to go much further because of the charger right now. You can unplug it. Oh, y'all got about to, Oh, that was a jig. Oh, no, sorry. Really? Wow. There we go. Okay. Forgot about that. <laughs> you just tell me where you need me. I think we're good now. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to go back to a ruler here. And work down this. I can stop and then I'll rotate. And then I'll work down this whole entire thing. So I'm actually, because I've got adjustable handles, I'm going to adjust this up real quick so you can see past that since okay. I only need one handle oh, right no, now. That would be great. So again, here we go with the little things. Well, it's nice to be able to just adjust it out of the way though. I'll move it up out of the way real quick. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me double check where you have any questions. Okay. You got me multitasking. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just going to continue doing stitch in the ditch while you do that. Well, what ruler foot are you using? Um, I'm using the open toe quick change foot system from Anova. Okay, so open toe foot. Open toe foot on this one. Um, normally, let me pause real quick there. Normally, we would recommend having a true ruler foot with a closed toe if you're using templates or rulers. Exactly. I have a little bit more experience in the game, so I am more comfortable having an open toe. We don't recommend having an open toe if you're just getting started because the corner of your template can get caught in that open toe and they can cause needle breakage and then it can cause skip stitches and then your machine needs a spa day. It's a whole, it's a whole scenario. So definitely have a closed toed foot if you're getting started out. And then once you get really comfortable, you could, you can kind of switch to an open toe. I like having the open toe so I can see directly to the needle, no matter where I am. My kind of my, OCD and my control freak self likes to see everything that's going on. Well, so I, I, I brought you the ruler foot if you want to change or if you're good. Huh? Oh, I've got one. There it's over there. Yeah. Um, but no, I like the open toe foot. Hi. Thank you, though. So just working down this stitch in the ditch as I go. Just uh, like that. Uh, one thing about metallic threads that I can talk about real quick since we're doing this. Um, when you're working with metallic thread, the tighter your stitch is, i.e. 14, 16, 18, the tighter you get, the harder it is to see the metallic shine. So if you plan on doing metallic threads, try to keep your stitch length a little uh, more open. So like 12 stitches per inch, maybe even 11, depending on what you're doing. And you'll really get to see the shine when you have more threads showing at that point. I know it sounds, excuse me, I know it sounds weird, but it's my logic and it works. <laughs> it's your logic and it works. Yeah. Just from all the experience I've had with metallic thread, um, it just makes it easier uh, to have a little bit of a larger stitch length if you really want it to shine. In this instance, I'm not super worried about it shining a lot and taking away from the panel. Um, I just want it to add to the panel. How's my multitasking amazing camera woman mom doing? <laughs> Oh, you have to ask you have an I'm iPad proud. over there. You got a camera. <laughs> you're standing on a chair on two feet. I know. I mean, bless I her soul. She's stool. doing it. She's <laughs> doing the work for y'all. We need to send her an edible arrangement. Oh no. What size thread are you using? Which is the well, the metallic? What size thread is that? Metallic's a forty weight. A forty weight. Okay. Almost done with this portion. I know this is, the Stitch in the Ditch is not the most exciting thing you can watch at night. 
Um, however, it's nice to see, you, you can kind of see I'm, I'm slowly rotating my ruler as I'm going around a curve. Um, that helps me when I, when I need to get where I want to go. So I think it's nice for you to see those options that you have. Yeah. Perfect time to get up, go get a, a drink and a snack and while he's doing some of the stitch in the ditch. Again, remember when you're doing stitch in the ditch, keep track of where your mark is to make sure that you're not going to run into your bar and kind of jolt and then mess up what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So right here is about as far as I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and tie off. Oh my goodness, I didn't even have you in screen. Oh no, I do, I do. It's so, I've got too much going on. You're doing great. You're doing <laughs> wonderful. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. I, I couldn't like do the, it by myself. I need to like the, you know, the store, the Apple store where they have the little, uh, like the strap over your neck and you hold the pad on and then you have your hand with your phone and you throw the pad up and throw it You're back to your You're getting that for your birthday. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, let's work on some fun uh, background work. Actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. So he's using su uh, Superior Metallic Thread, yeah, which we do sell on our gold. website, but this is the light gold color he's using by Superior Threads. And did you already talk about the tricks to using metallic thread? Uh -uh. So what you want to tell them a little bit, we have some questions on that, like the size hmm. needle, maybe easy thread, things like that. So when you're working with metallic thread, um, depends on your machine, but um, you would definitely want to have a little bit of a larger needle. So if you have like a 5.0, uh, size 21 sharp needle, um, you'll have a lot more success because it has a bigger eye. Um, and since your thread has to go back and forth through your eye so many times, um, you want to have that large eye for it to not worry about. And then, but that's that's normally the biggest thing. That's um, the biggest thing. I mean, so, you know, you don't put it in the bobbin case. What are you using in the bobbin case? I'm using micro quilter in the bobbin case. Okay. I am a little bit more experienced. Again, I will always say that, and it's not a flex it's that you might want to start with bottom line in the bobbin. Okay. Um, just because it's a little closer in weight. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to fuddle with your tension as much. So we would recommend probably bottom line and then you could move on to microculture later if you wanted to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, and then um, also I know a tip that we used to use was we would put some easy thread on it just to help it glide even better. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Just to kind of get put that thread lubricant on it. Yeah, um, and then I would also you said no, but see, now it's hard for me to answer this one. I'm thinking. I'm thinking and quilting at the same time. So stop it. That's, That's okay. a dangerous time. thing. What was I about to say? That was not, not in the bobbin. Use a thread. Oh, taking it slow. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Like you're doing. Like I'm doing. When, when you're doing metallic quilting, even if you decide to do metallic thread over the whole quilt, you definitely want to slow down how you're doing. If you have a computerized machine, slow it down. Um, just because metallic is uh, a little bit more brittle. And... Not that it's not gonna hold up over time, um, but you definitely just wanna take it a little bit slower so it can make that beautiful stitch that you want it to. And then, oh, oh, a new tip that I forgot to bring up is, you, did you know that not every long arm machine has that little, little place that holds the thread like ours do? Like the thread, you know, the thread sits on the little spool holder. Oh, yeah, Sometimes yeah. they just have spool holders. Okay, I see what you're and saying. And there's nothing that holds it. Like a plate. Okay. Like a plate thing. Yeah. So if you don't have one of those, kind of make shift it out of cardboard because if the metallic, it's slippery. Mm -hmm. It'll slide off as it goes and then it gets, it gets caught underneath and rolled up and then it pops. Do you want to show them what kind of what you're talking about? I'm um, sure. I know you have a nice angle. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm going to let... Ah, where's it at? Oh, you can just make How the, you? Well, just you the screen. Oh, that, that's good right there. Yeah, so you can make something to work if you don't have something that... So that, something like that, just because it easily falls off of the spool, you don't want it to fall underneath it if it's just sitting on one little thing. Um, so there's, there's that little additional tip that we have found over time. And I'm sorry if I'm giving y'all sickness as we go around here. here and, go. Uh, so Barb, yes, he is in stitch regulated mode. Good question. And on this, I'm just working around these little petals. I'm not really super worried about it hitting perfectly. I think it adds a little bit of extra dimension. And when you don't worry about hitting things perfectly, you end up hitting things perfectly. That's my little tip of the day. <laughs> so try not to stress too much about it is what you're saying? Not, no, don't stress too much about it. It's a quilt. It's going to be okay. Um, but to have fun with it. That's the, really the biggest thing. 
have some fun with this as you work around. And then you'll give yourself a little bit of extra dimension, a little bit more flavor with it if you really just kind of flow with it. It's like a pantograph. Yeah. Just flow with it. Don't try yeah. to make it super duper perfect. Otherwise, it's not going to be what you want it to be. Good Trust tip. and take believe. Your time. Take your time. Have Enjoy fun it. with it. You have a long arm. Have fun with it. Yep. So, all right, let's pull this up and then we get to do some background quilting and we're going to switch threads and we're going to switch needles. All sorts of fun stuff. Well, and if you don't have a long arm, you have a mid arm or a sit down. Or a sit down. Still have fun with it. Still have fun it's with just it. That you, get to you have a machine. Have fun with it. Yep. All right. So, where are you going now? Drop that. I'm going to switch threads real quick. Okay. So, I'm let's gonna, show the thread that you're switching to. I'm going to switch to a micro quilter. On top, we're going to do micro quilter 7002 on this one. And that's going to be for this background cream area. Okay. I'll get you zoned down there. And as you can see, I kind of bounce my threads around. I work, I just kind of change things as I go. Um, I work with what's in my throat space. I might miss something and then I'll have to change threads again and go back. Um, but it's the process that works best for my brain. Um, but we'll do whatever works best for you. I think the best thing about watching videos or doing educational retreats or anything like that is taking different tips and tricks from every different educator and blending them together to make one. So, um, did you have to reduce the tension at all by using the metallic thread? Yes. We, at the beginning, we thought we, it was something, um, but as we've worked through, the bottom was coming up a little bit, so we, we it reduced the tension a little bit on it. Okay, perfect. Good question. All right, so I'm just going to pull my thread through. Again, this is that micro quilter. Now, micro quilter is 100 weight. It's super duper 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 thin. Um, but it, it really quilts up beautifully um, as we do this. And you do have to make some tension adjustments on that. This, this is more correct? Mm hmm So you do, I mean, it's just kind of like doing a quilt sandwich every time you want to change your thread. Mm hmm Yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to change it up just a hair, always checking what you're going to do. Um, uh, can you just, no, can you hold the, the back thread? It's moving a little bit. Oh. Thank you. There we go. It was, it was moving a little bit on me, so I just needed help. Okay. And I'm also going to switch out my needle real quick. I had oh, okay. that five in because I was doing the uh, metallic. metallic. So I want to switch it down to a four. Uh, four is kind of my go-to. You, you see, you guys get to see everything because since it's live, all the changes. Yep. All right. Coming in with a four. I just swap those out. Do I have a needle line that magnet back here? I could probably go get you one. Can you grab me one, please? I got it now. Okay. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for holding that thread for me. I appreciate it. It you really is a two-person thing sometimes, I, I swear. Me running all over the Golly, store. she's I'm getting your steps in today. I need them after I ate that crumble cookie. Not the crumble cookie. Well, I had to have you some food, like a, like a craft, uh, craft services, services. Area I here. felt like a superstar. <laughs> I was like, man, can I come to work like this every day? <laughs> All right, I'm grabbing a needle alignment magnet and plopping that on the front of the needle. Gives me a visual idea of where the eye of the needle is pointing. Uh, normally, you're wanting your needle about 6 o'clock, so that magnet pointing right back at you. Uh, I'm working with mine a little bit cankered. I'm having it at about the 530 position uh, just to give me a little bit of a different stitch quality. Uh, it's fun to play with a little bit of cankering. You don't want to go too far turning your needle, but between that 536 or 630, especially if you're doing piano key, straight line quilting back and forth, uh, you'll want to canker it just a little bit. Um, it just helps the stitch come out a little bit straighter because of the way the thread is feeding into the needle. So take the magnet off once you're done. You don't want to leave it on there. Ask me how I know. <laughs> well, and those are fun. If you don't have one, you definitely should get one of those in your arsenal. We sell them on the website in a pair of two. Definitely. So nice to have. Debbie had a funny, uh, funny story on here. Maybe not so funny, but I love how people, are, they share their stories. It's awesome. So thanks for sharing it. She said, I had a friend. Um, I have a machine. I definitely have fun with it until a friend of mine brought me a piece backing and labeled the top and bottom wrong. Oh. The top didn't line up and was all pulled off. She's like, oh my gosh, I wanted to die. No. <laughs> no, that's hard. It is. Um, so Lisa wants to know what would happen if you didn't change your needle from a five back to a four? 
Um, not a huge, like, different, good question. Not a huge difference between a five and a four when it would become to quilting. Um, it just depends on what fabric you're working on. Like, if you're working on a batik, a five is really going to have a big hole. Um, and you might not get the stitch that you're looking for. Uh, so I always just, in my head, like to just go back to a nice four. It just kind of gets me back centered again back in. in well, and it just so it makes a smaller hole. So a I think bit that's what breaks hole. it down, too, yeah. is that if you have it, definitely change back if you can, just to have a little bit of a smaller hole yeah. in your fabric. Yeah, so. and then if you're switching threads a lot besides metallic, then you don't have to keep changing your needle if you go down you know, you know, to wherever you want to be. Um, but yeah, I, I just like to go back home to a four. Okay. That's where I like to be. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need both handles for this. So can you tell me if that looks okay? Yeah. Okay. Go camera woman. She's about tired of climbing up and down this <laughs> chair. Well, I can't this find chair, the stool. I don't know where Darren put it. I'm going to blame him. Blaming Darren. Because <laughs> he's not here. That's why you can blame him. All right. It's Is good right good now. Because I'm going to be in this area. Yeah. Is that good? good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to be doing, again, 14 stitches per inch. I'm going to actually, I'm going to start with 14 and then I'm actually going to turn off the regulator for those of you that don't have stitch regulators so you can see. Um, but we're going to start off with 14 stitches per inch as we go. Okay. What was that? It, the, the camera goes back and forth when you put oh, your hand, when you're I'm waving sorry, your hand. Focusing. To focus. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to start this up. I'm going to be doing that. Actually, I should probably show you. I'm going to be doing that uh, peacock little feather that we did. So let me grab my iPad and I'll give you a, a quick show of that so you have an idea before we get started. So we're gonna be working with this design right here. Oh, that's pretty. Um, and this is gonna be in the background. Biggest thing about this whenever you're doing that peacock feather is whenever you're starting out is give yourself a nice tight teardrop and come back to that point. Oh yeah. And that's gonna blend and give you a nice peacock feather. If you don't come back to that point, then it begins to be a, it's, it's still a nice design. It just doesn't give you that same peacock look that you're going for. I feel like I need this app too, and I can play in my office and draw. And just draw. It's fun just to draw. I know. You don't even like have to, to do it just drawing. to quit. It's just fun to draw. All right. Two hands on the machine. Stitch regulator 14. Here we go. Nice, tight, and going out. Oh, I've got a better one for y'all. What? You're doing white on white quilting. Turn oh. on your black light. Well, there you go, yeah. And you can see the thread a little see bit the more. Bit. I was just saying, I can't see the thread at all. Yeah. How are we doing? Doing good. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. Again, oh, we got a question this. on the drawing app again. So I need to. It's Art Art Studio Pro, and we're. I'm not sure if it's if they have it for an Android. We have iPads, so we didn't check that. So if they don't, I'm sorry. But it's Art Studio Pro. So with this again, you're just keeping that nice and tight. If you have to fill something in, echo and make it work. You do uh, also want to be able to change direction when you're doing this so you don't get caught in a uh, kind of directional pull throughout this piece. So kind of throw that in and make it work for you. Debbie, he stays really cool because he really loves doing this. He sometimes stresses though. You can, I can see him when his face starts getting red where you don't see it. <laughs> but he just loves showing you guys these techniques and, and being on here with you. This is like his wheelhouse, so, so we really love that you guys are watching it with him tonight. Um, we just love being here. And Laura said, yes, the black light is wonderful. I'm I like sorry. everybody talking. Were you asking me a question? No, I'm just oh, talking to okay. Him. All right. Sorry, I was in the zone. <laughs> Remembering to change direction as you go and come back to your initial teardrop point. And that'll give you the design that you're really after. Don't be afraid to get in and do this kind of stuff, y'all. It is so much fun. Can they see it or do we need to turn no, off the light? No, we're good. 
Okay. No, they can see it with the black light. Okay, I'll say we can turn off the main lights too. Oh, I and think we can let me really try that just it. to see. Yeah. I can do it real quick since I don't want you up and down the chair. Oh, good. I'm you like, gonna miss the chair one day. I'm getting my uh, what you call it, like so, when you step up and down on the stairs. You're doing the stair step. I'm doing the stair step. So I'm gonna turn off the light real quick. You tell me quickly if it doesn't look good. <laughs> if not, it just goes dark. Whoa, that's cool. Does it look good? Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, I can see it good, but can you guys see it good? I think it looks great. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, at least <laughs> do like it for it. a little bit. I like it. At least do it for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, a black light makes my tension look bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny. No judgment, please, y'all. Oh, now you're all gonna see when I mess up now. Hold on, turn it back to white light, please. <laughs> oh my uh -uh, gosh. Now you've done showing them how cool it is. Oh my lanta. If you get caught up in a little sector, just give yourself a little echo out of it. The best thing about back background quilting is it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just lying it down. Again, keeping that initial teardrop nice and tight and then building off that. So here we are working our way around to get to another place. We're making a nice tight teardrop off of that and then coming out of it. Hey mom, I wanted to talk about, um, can you just give a brief rundown on the uh, needles about difference between sharp and ballpoint and why you would use one over the other? Yeah, I'm just, your hand's starting to get in the oh, way. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is, okay. is that better? Yeah. Okay. So we talked a little bit on our good morning LAQ last week about different needles mm -hmm. and why you would use certain needles over other needles on certain fabrics, etc., etc. And so there's a difference. You should go back and watch that and we'll watch, make a more in depth video. But for the most part, when you're using cotton fabric on cotton fabric and using, say, these type of threads that we're using, the sharp needle is nice to have in there. Mm -hmm. um, you can use a titanium, a light ball point, you know, if you want. But the sharp needle seems to just work better on cotton versus on cotton on cotton. Now, definitely, if you're using minky or t-shirt quilts, those type of things, that's when we would recommend using a ballpoint. Mm -hmm. On a minky, maybe the titanium, mm -hmm. and then on t-shirt, t-shirt, then definitely the uh, medium-sized ballpoint. Yeah. Um, also, digitally printed fabrics. Oh, yeah, digitally printed fabrics. Yeah, you'll definitely want to have. Um a titanium for that or a ballpoint in your arsenal for that. All right, here's a good tip. Right here, I'm caught in a space. I don't, can we see that? Uh, kind of. We could probably turn the light back on if you want. I don't know, it looks so good. That's fine, no, you can leave it, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Right here, I'm caught in a space. So I wanna give myself a peacock feather, uh, these little teardrop things, to fill this, and then I wanna travel out and echo around this one that I've just done. So I'm gonna come in, give myself a tight teardrop, and then echo, 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 echo around, and you're out of that. Yeah. Okay, it it'll look better with the lights on. I promise. <laughs> I mean, you can definitely see everything like I this. I know. Oh my gosh! Now y'all can tell that I am just doing it. I'm just working. It's just it's just having fun with it, y'all. Having because when you step back and you look at this, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And you do have to remember, you are your worst critic. I can do something and absolutely think it's atrocious. But everyone, because we have such an amazing team, and I have an amazing mom, says this is the, like the best thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, really? There's a mistake here, 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 here. And they're saying, well, I don't see that. Um, <laughs> and so I think that's something to behold. You want to look and see if you have any questions that you want to answer? Um, give, your, give your hand a break for a second. Sure. Let me pause for a second and see what's going on. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. It's easier to quilt with the lights that way. It shows us perfect. Oh, I'm glad um as we're working in here so phenomenal cool good well i just want to make sure everybody can see it okay yeah i think so um and i jolted at the last second there so i caused myself to have a thread break oh <laughs> so now y'all get to see me fix a thread break all righty well did yeah. you want to turn the light back on or leave it off or um, they're, they're liking seeing this i'm okay. going to finish this section so it's okay. going to be some time okay um on this one okay oh i was going to grab the other camera and show them around too while you're while they're looking at that. 
we had a little bit of a skip stitch that happened here, so I get to pull up these last few. Um, and that was all on me. Uh, it just caused me to pop up because uh, I jolted at the end. But this is the stuff that y'all run into every single day. Um, so it just shows you that, you know, we're not all perfect. And we just get to get through and fix it. There we go. Just like that. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and trim off the thread to tie it, uh, make a nice, ooh, there it is, nice cut. Okay, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go, <laughs> nice cut. Relax, it's okay. You're only live. That's fine, no one's watching. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, everything's great. Um, right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up. Now, this is a good thing to bring up too. Um, this quilt, from what I've been told from the way the owner is going to end up using it in the use case, shout out Mary Jo if you're watching. Um, this quilt is gonna end up being a wall hanging. So I'm not worried about retying and burying the broken thread or the skip stitch because it's not going to be heavily used. Uh, now, if this was going to be heavily used or showcased, um, like in a bedroom on a bed or something like that, um, I would probably pull up and tie and bury those threads just to make sure that they were still tight and they weren't gonna slip away. Um, and now that I've got that tied back down for this wall hanging, I'm gonna start back in the down position and then move a little bit and trim my thread. And we had a good question from Janet. Are ballpoint needles recommended for use on APQS machines? When I called APQS, they did not sell them. Um, I would think that you could still use ballpoint. You just gotta make sure you're using the right needle type. Yeah, I don't see why you could. the right have. needle size. So whether it's a 134 MR, 134, 135, 17, there's different machines have different needles, so always make sure you know your needle size. Um, but yeah, I don't see why ballpoint would be an issue because it's the same height in the shaft, so you should be you should be able to use it. And I even think the needles we sell work for APQS. You said what? I think the needles that if you use the 134 MRs, sure do, we yeah. sell those and we have ballpoints. It wouldn't hurt to grab a package on your next order and try it out. Yeah. Know. Okay, so I did promise you that I would show off um, not doing stitch regulated. Um, so this, we were doing 14 stitch per inch. Now I'm going to hop into non-stitch regulated. I'm going to start it at a pretty slow speed, and then I'll build up from there just so I can get my footing. But this is if you don't have a stitch regulator. You are your, okay, that's way too slow. You are your own regulator. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up my machine. I can do it while I'm quilting. Now the cool thing about turning off regulated and becoming your own regulator is you're not fighting the stitch regulator. It just makes the machine kind of glide the whole time. And you get more control sometimes in my opinion, but now you do have to keep moving. Yeah, because if you stop, moving. the needle ain't stopping. <laughs> <laughs> But so if you haven't tried that on your machine, you definitely should. If you have a manual mode, which most machines that have a stitch regulator do, I would highly recommend trying it out and finding the speed that works best for what you're working on. Now I'm in here really doing nice, tight work. So I slowed it down just a hair. When I get more out to an open space in a second, I might speed it back up. and it's just a nice, pretty, beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. They definitely hum when you have them in constant mm -hmm. I hope y'all are enjoying this. I'm having fun. Mom, yeah. are you having fun? Yeah. I'm loving this in the black light. I'm glad y'all are loving this in the black. I can see every imperfection. <laughs> That's okay. Just have fun. You just told them to have just fun. Just no have matter fun what. with it. Yeah, I'm saying that, but in my head, I'm crying. <laughs> but it is the truth. Just have fun with it. But 
the the thing is, is once we turn the black light off, you, you will not see, see any, any of, of this. Yep. As long as you're not making a quilt for a you know a roller rink or something that's got the black, the black light lights. all the time, <laughs> we'll be good to go. <laughs> I think it's gonna be cute. But it just adds in some beautiful background quilting. However, remember to do the stitch in the ditch around what you're going to do the background quilting in first. Otherwise, it's gonna skew um, the quilt or the piecing of the block. And then you're not gonna be happy with the end result. This is keeping it nice and stable while I'm coming in and filling this section in. So Mike, I agree with you, it is like hypnotic. It can put you into hypnostasis just watching it. The sound and just watching the quilting, it's like staring at it. You will visit longarmsupplies.net. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that again? No. You will get micro quilter thread. <laughs> you will get free shipping over $75 <laughs> if you use the code. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. While you are doing some of that, if you can think and talk at the same time. Yeah, I can. Been, um, we have a few people asking, how did you get into long arm quilting? Oh, good question. It's a good story. It's, it's a story, <laughs> it's a story nonetheless. Are we still in camera view? I feel like I'm going out, or am I good? Oh, no, I'm you're good. still in camera okay. view. I've been getting up and down. Okay. Um, actually, my mom and I moved to the Metroplex when I was a wee little baby, back in the day. And, um, when my mom got here, she was a big um, high tech, not high tech, she's still not high tech. High, you were a high up executive at some company. And um, one day she went, long story short, one day she went to work and the office was closed. They shut the store down, or the building down, and moved their offices without telling anybody. Um, so she had to find something quick, because she was a single mother and I like to eat. <laughs> and so she uh, went to church, she prayed about it, and she found, I'm gonna start crying. Yeah. Um, she found Rick and Linda, who needed a customer service associate. Um, and so she applied, she got the job, and I'm getting teary-eyed while I'm doing this. And um, she didn't have much money for daycare, so Linda actually let my mom bring me up there after school. And my mom was concerned that I was not going to be a, a pest or annoying, but that I was just around heavy machinery and she didn't want me in the way. So Linda kind of took me under her wing. And for, all, for those of you that know Linda V. Taylor, she is a phenomenal woman. Um, but she kind of took me under her wing and I got to hang out with her during all of her long arm classes while my mom was working. Um, so I got really into free motion and quilting because that was my daycare. I got to hang out with Linda and, um, and quilt. So I just kind of jumped, she'd bring me a stool. If y'all could see mom right now, mom's on a stool. She brought <laughs> me the same thing and she put me up on the machine and she said, here's some fabric, you just quilt and you have fun. And- um, Why I was in panic mode. Why she was in panic mode so thinking I was gonna break something. the new machine. And she'd be like, no, it's fine. He's He'll be, be fine. fine. <laughs> um, but that she also used that in marketing. She's like, if Corey can do it, y'all can do it. He's only eight, he's fine. Um, but growing up, um, I didn't have like the super best like school experience growing up. So coming to at work every day and quilting um, really made all my hardships and my sorrows kind of disappear. And so I find the most relaxation, I find the most happiness uh, when I'm here on this machine and giving away what I know to y'all. Am I in the way? Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't want to stop because you were just doing, no, you were doing really good telling your story. Crying the whole time. I know time, you are. Sobbing over here. Golly. And they had okay. a question about when you started. I don't, they, they, you started I playing when you were eight. I started quilting when I was eight and I'm, t I'm about to be 28. Or am I a 28? Uh, I, I think, think I'm about, to, am I 28? You're, you'll be 28. I'll be 28 this month. Yeah. Um, okay, I've gone too far because there's no stitch in the ditch down here, so yeah, I need to stop. stop. <laughs> I need to stop. So I'm going to turn the lights back on. Let's turn the lights back on so we can so see that you don't see anything. That was a now. trip down memory lane. Sorry I for the long, you were... the long Whoa, trip. Oh, that here. got bright. But see, now you see nothing. It's beautiful. Oh, look at that background quilting. <laughs> That's pretty. All right, righty, what's next? Um, I'm actually going to swap back to metallic thread, okay. and we're going to quilt some in the peacock here. I'm going to roll, and we're going to quilt in the peacock. 
Okay, so while you're doing that, I will, who wants to, me to walk them around the store a little bit while he's setting things up? You don't want to watch him roll and stuff, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> okay, so it's got, I couldn't get the little holder to work, so you're going to see me holding it. Oh, well, just don't shake them too much. You good? There you go. All right, so while he's getting everything set for the next section, I'm just going to walk you around the store. If you've never been in our store, um, cutting to table area obviously lots of quilts to look at then we have tons and tons and tons of wide back we really focus on wide backs here a few panels um, and then just to, a lot of people come in all the time to um, help we help them match their backings we even have people that come in and just buy fabric to piece with um, so we love having them come in we have a table in the back that they just lay their quilts on and we just work with them and help them accomplish the dream that you're trying, they're trying to get out of it. So we also sell the minky, the wide minky uh, cuddle. And then it's like a candy store of thread. Corey, you just tell me when you're ready and I'll come back. Okay. And if I have questions, I'll answer them when I get back to that ser section. Sorry. <laughs> um, some more thread here. If you have a hand-guided machine, you might not know this, but we actually produce and make a lot of the pantograph patterns. We have a plotter, um, so check those out on our website. Looks like the weather improved a little bit, so that's nice. I'm just showing you all the different things. So if you ever get a chance to come to the DFW area, jump up to McKinney, we're not too far. And if you have somebody with you that's not into quilting, we have chairs for them to relax, and those get used a lot. And now we're going down signature row. We try to carry all the colors. We try to keep them at the best prices possible for you guys. And we got all the glide. Corey, it's really like being in a candy store. Like all the different colors. He doesn't hear me. He's focused. I'm going to let you guys sneak into the office. Uh, the web address of our store is longarmsupplies.net. So... This is our office. This is where all the magic happens. This is Corey's chair. His little corner gets all of his stuff done. His oh, editing computer. The corner. It's messy. And then over here is my office. Oh, I love the ocean. Um, love having a map because I just every time I talk to people on the phone, I love hearing where they're from. And I look around the map and talk to them. Then we have our shipping computer. Obviously, and then we have where our customer service team sits over here. And then I won't take you all the way back here, but kind of our warehouse. So if you place an order from, from us, it goes right over here to the shipping folder thing. And it comes over here, gets pulled and packed, and we try to ship everything out within 24 business hours. So um, if it's not a business day, then it won't be that day, but, you know, within business days. Okay, Corey is ready, so Corey, take it, take it away. I will in just one moment. I didn't know you were all the way in the back of the warehouse. Oh, we also <laughs> carry Hobbs batting, if you can check the Hobbs stuff and all the rolls. So if you need any type of rolls of batting, we have really good prices on Hobbs rolls. Okay, Corey, take it away. <laughs> Speed through the infomercial. I was just trying to let you get Speed shaking. Speed <laughs> through the infomercial. <laughs> um, okay, so I am back. I've got... Change that back. Ah, that's weird light. Okay. Um, I've got the metallic back in and I switched back to a different needle. And so I'm going to finish doing the rest of the stitch in the ditch around the uh, peacock here. So I will pull up my thread and I will tie and bear, or just tie these down actually. I'm not going to bury it. I'm going to tie these down and then I'm just going <laughs> to. It's good. It's going to happen to me. Um, I'm going to switch back to stitch regulated mode, so I'm not doing stitch in the ditch <laughs> at uh, constant speed. There we go. That's a little better. That uh, gave me a mini heart attack there for a second. All right. So we're just working around the top feathers of this peacock. Since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and stitch inside of them since we're already here in this point. Um, so I'm actually going to travel up this, do a little bit of a texture dot. Oh, Mom, you're back. You missed it. I started in constant. Oh, my goodness. I'll do in stitch in the ditch. I had a heart attack. <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine now. Again, what they, the, the, all these things that you're doing happen to quilters that are quilting. They oh, might get distracted. And all they were, the time. You know, so, yeah, these are all things. It's nice to see that you can do all that, too. 
my head in the way. Oh. No. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, if it's gonna, I mean, it happens to me all the time. There's more than one occasion that I've forgotten what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> what we're doing here again, just coming up, doing some texture dots inside of the this peacock feather up here, and then we'll continue on doing the rest of our stitch in the ditch. So just doing this quickly, uh, slowly, quickly, around the outside. But since we're staying in the gold, I'm just gonna work my way around here. I like how you're doing this kind of the stitch in the ditch or kind of echoing around the pattern, if you wanna call it that too. It kind of gives it the little, um, like a framework, right? Like it pops out when it's all said and done. Mm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, you're just, you're separating it from the background because of how tight we're doing the background quilting. Um, it's gonna look really, really nice. I think I'm ready to start the peacock. Okay. I think, okay. Alrighty. All right, so we're just gonna travel up these. Uh, the majority of the peacock we're following directly what's already printed on the panel. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just giving ourselves a little bit of time to kind of accentuate how beautiful this design is. So, traveling up. We find our way somewhere, we're gonna head back this way. So this is more brick work. As we go. And now we're gonna work through this. So this is kind of a curved um, piece here, if you will, if you will. Um, so I could take a arch template to do well, that. While you're gathering that, thanks everybody for your sweet comments. It is, Debbie, it is the best toy store on the planet for sure. <laughs> well, we think um, it is. <laughs> and we, we try our best to ship as fast as we can because we know how much you guys need the things that you need. Because um, we always got that quilt top and then it just didn't have quite the right thread and we really need that thread going so we get it. Right. Um, a hard time stitching with metallic. No, it takes some time. You slow down. There's a few tips we gave you at the beginning um, that to use metallic. So uh -huh. definitely wanted to do those tips, but overall, not too bad. This, yeah. I'm just, I'm using this arch template just to provide a little bit of tension to, I say tension, a little bit of resistance, that's the word, um, to what I'm doing here. Again, remember, we, we're striving not to be super duper uber perfect on this. Super duper uber. Super duper uber. Um, just because we want it to look natural and we want it just to kind of blend with the overall flow of this original design. Someone says it looks like beads and it really does look like beads. Like, because you're going in between the lines. So it's like oh, yeah. Got gold beads in there. That's pretty. That looks good. Okay. Especially because I can see it in person, too. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks much better in person. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got that done. Instead of tying off, I'm just going to travel back up the exact same way. Actually, I need to do stitch in the ditch in here. So I'm going to travel up line. this line. There you go. And then travel up this way. And then for this one, we're going to be doing kind of that clamshell that the peacock has. I'm going to try and get to the top so we can see ourselves coming down. My, my, I had a little bit of an uh-oh when I started this. I started down here and I went away from myself. So you don't really see what direction you're heading when you're heading behind the machine. So try to always come towards yourself when you're doing your quilting. Yeah. So I'm going to travel up the rest of this and then I'm going to catch into one of these clamshells. I'm gonna go ahead and do that stitch in the ditch. And then from here, we're just gonna clamshell it. And to be real honest, I'm trying to stay within the actual line work, but sometimes it's just fun to work outside the lines and give yourself your own clamshell work. Well, no, it's, it actually will probably give it extra dimension too. True, you do it that way. true. All right, so we're done there. I'm gonna travel back. Have a little fun with the machine, let loose a little bit. I gotta tie myself back down, there we go. Again, just adding that clamshell work dimension. Because you use the same gold metallic, it's really hard to tell that you're not exactly right in those lines, so that's okay. We're working through this. As we go, come up here. 
and now let's do this section right here. So this one I'm just going to mimic those same curls that are inside the piece. So we're going to curly cue it and come down, curly cue it, come down. So when you're at a stopping point, we had a good question about if you didn't have any rulers yet, what would be some good starter, starter rulers to have? Do you want to go ahead and talk about those? Huh? Do you want to talk about those? Yeah, well, you're, well, I was going to let you take a break from stitching, rest your hands a little bit, and then we can actually show them with the camera. Okay. My, my thread messed up again <laughs> behind my thing. So that's okay. I need to fix it anyway. So good stopping point, everybody. There you go. Um, I would like to have the 4x8 ruler in my arsenal along with the applique helper. Um, and then I'd like to have the... Um, a circle and star template. This one's a little large for starting out. Yeah, but, but like the three six. The three by six circle by. Oh, I guess I could zoom out so you can see it. There we go. <laughs> the three by six circle by star is a good one to start off with. Um, Here you go. And then I have we it. have a. Do you have that over there? Yeah, I'm okay. just trying to grab it. So we have guys, like one I'm of loud, every template we carry back there, so it gets to be a lot of templates. Yeah, that one. That one's good. I'll take that. I would have that one, and then we also have a six, a six by six square template, um, which is really nice. So that actually builds your template starter kit. Um, so out of these, you have the template starter kit comes with. That's, I forgot about that. Good, all good point. of. We're missing two. What am I missing? The four. I think you're missing. Oh, the, the heart four. and the oval and the six by six square. Okay, here's anyway, a six by six. Six square. by six square, and then there's a heart oval one. Yeah. But this is a good starter package that has all those templates in it and then I would highly recommend getting some grip dots we have those as well and they stick onto the template and it keeps it from shifting while you're quilting because it grips onto the fabric but it doesn't damage the fabric this is an old blue prototype <laughs> but at least we have one <laughs> so it <laughs> just shows you template. all the things that came coming in but they're all clear but you can get good arches there hearts um, but they're all they're all clear now uh, this was just a prototype. Yeah, so that's on our website. If you're looking for a good starter base, the template starter kit really has everything you can need to get started. Is the one that you'll want. And then, like I said, my uh, thread got caught out of one of my doodads. Your doodads? Is that so what it's called? A doodad? One of my thread guys. It, it popped out of one of my thread guys. Oh. So if you want to check questions real quick momentarily, let me fix my thread guide. This happens to y'all, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, it's not just me. I'm going to pull up my thread. So I can trim my bobbin and then I need to fix my thread guide. I was having too much fun and I got it out of my thread guide. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Not really questions, just comments. Debbie said that she came into the store last September, so she with her sister-in-law. Oh, so, fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah, we love when people are able to come by. We have people that kind of come from all over. We're right off of a main, it's a highway, but it's like an interstate, even though it's not interstate. It's Highway 75. We're literally two seconds, well, two minutes probably with traffic these days, off the um, highway. So if you're ever coming in this area, definitely make a trip, stop by, tell us hi. Yes. Corey and I are normally here Monday through Friday the whole Most time. Most of the time. Yeah. Saturdays are split for us, but um, yeah, we definitely love to see you. We basically live here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, when you're passionate about the business that you own, you really never leave it sometimes. Oh, Wendy had a good suggestion. I've never tried this. What's up? She said she sprayed her clear rulers and templates with clear flex seal. Um, and she said she likes them better than the rubber feet. Oh. So I'm sure the seal on there holds it. Holds the whole thing. Yeah, it holds the whole thing. What is that? That's What's something that? we'll have to try, Wendy. The clear flex seal. Is that yeah. from that OxyClean guy? I don't know. Clear Where does it come seal. from, Wendy? Is it from like a Home Depot or? Not the Home Depot. Not the Lowe's? I don't know. Ace Hardware? Not the, not the Ace Hardware. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Now I'm back in business. Sorry, y'all. Um, I was going so quick and I was jolting so much that uh, my thread actually hopped out of one of my thread guides and then it caused it to get caught in another part of the machine. So, so Janice, happens. at some point you will see the finished product. It won't be tonight. We were just really trying to do as much as possible with you while you guys are here. He's going to keep quilting. Um, and then, yeah, eventually the finished product will have a picture of it on it. It will get page. done because the lady that I'm supposed to give this back to is eager to get it back. I bet. So it's got to get done. <laughs> well, she's quickly. probably watching the video now, too. She's like, okay, oh, no I question. know he's working on no it. No question. Get it done. <laughs> she's waiting. She's, I've had this since November. Oh, goodness. She's waiting. Um, so, in here, this is some open space. I don't know if you could zoom into that. Yeah. Um, I've got open linen gray space here. I want to add in some baby feathers. 
and this would be a fun time to increase my stitches per inch. Okay. So right now I'm normally working at 14. I'm going to amp this up to 16. Actually, I'm going to do 18 stitches per 18 inch. 18 stitches per 18 inch. 18 stitches oh, per look inch. look at there. Right in there. Okay. And you're doing it with the metallic thread. Metallic thread. We're going to go for it. Okay. We're going to pray. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> do it. I think that's another reason you like the open toe foot is so you can actually see, especially when exactly you're doing small work. Exactly like where I'm going. You got it. Well, bam. There you go. Let me zoom in a little bit. That's closer. cute. I like that. Yeah, that looks really good. All right, I'm gonna hop back to 14 stitches per inch because that's what I was doing with everything else. Okay. And then I'm gonna do these feathers here real quick. Not super, these are just in and out. And then we're gonna do some fun stuff in these long pieces that they have down here. Okay. So bear with me momentarily. Well, you know, this is a come and go event. So if you have something you need to do, you know, definitely go, go do it. And then you can always come back and watch it later. The fun thing about being with us live is you get to ask questions. And um, so we love that we have so many people watching. We really appreciate you being here. You it talked keeps Corey going. Facts. You talked about the batting, right? No, I haven't yet. So let's okay. let's take a break and do that. So That's right. I have some pieces over there for you. You have a sample over there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Just to kind of show the thickness and why it's nice to use this type of batting. So I'm using a batting that um, is made specifically for us. It's exclusively available. I like to say that. <laughs> um, at Linda's Electric Quilters. So this is called Linda's Choice. It's 100% cotton with a scrim binder on the back. Um, so what a scrim binder is, it's a thin, super duper thin polyester layer that is micro needle punched into, she's having, you want me to do this too? Well, much? no, so you can see it. You, was, you couldn't see it Oh, as well. no, okay. Can see it um, that's micro needle punched into the thread. It doesn't change the feel of it. However, um, it keeps it together because if you just have plain 100% cotton without a scrim, it's like a cotton ball. It just comes apart. But yeah, this one, yeah, it stays together. It stays together really well. You can stitch up eight to 10 inches apart. It's wonderful for wall hangings, for... Wonderful for wall hangings, show quilts, everyday quilts, placemats, yeah, table runners. Yeah, for all that stuff. If you have a customer or yourself looking for a weighted quilt... This is the this thread. Is Give me the thread. <laughs> this, this is, is the batting. The, you need to go to bed. <laughs> this is the batting for it. Um, because it is a heavy, dense cotton, it's going to produce more of a weighted quilt. Again, so it's called Linda's Choice. It's exclusively sold by us and made for us. And it and hangs it, nice. Yeah. Um, benefit of using 100% cotton as well. It normally grips really well to 100% cotton fibers. Yes, it does. Um, so it kind which of stays in place. Makes really, uh, which is really nice. It uh, can be bought in a roll or in a three yard pack. That's all we have it set up for right now. Question just came in my head. Someone yeah. asked about wide back uh, fleece. Talk about that. What about this? We have it. We don't have that much left though. But we have some. We have one pretty one that just came in. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, well, someone asked, we have it, I'm saying. We do have a couple wide back She just fleece. looked at me, she was like, Oh my God, I don't have that many left. We have that new blue one that just came in with the swirls. Yeah. Yeah, for so now. We do, yeah, so we do <laughs> have some wide back fleece. Um, we do occasionally get more in too. We tend to stick with the natural colors, mm -hmm. like, you know, because that's what people want with the fleece. Well, it's hard oh. to find a lot of fleece. It's hard, yeah, it's hard so. to find stuff that's really just neutral. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we do have some on our website and you definitely can check that out and we get more fabric and fleece and minky all the time. Um, so Debbie, the, the roll is 25 yards. It's 108 inches wide. It was made that way so it could work with almost any quilt. Um, so it's 108 inches wide and it is a 25 yard roll. Um, if it's in comparison to rolls that you've had in the past, say like an 80-20, which weighs about 18, 19 pounds, and Alinda's Choice at 25 yards rule weighs between 32 and 35 pounds. So it's, you can tell that the difference in weight and how strong it is. So we have that, and then uh, we also carry it in a three yard pack for people that just want to try it out. Cool. Okay, Corey, go ahead. All right, so here down on these feathers, I want to actually grab And yes, the... it's white, it's, it's an actual bleached. Sorry, I didn't catch that question. <laughs> um, I actually want to grab uh, the good old iPad again to show you that what we're doing here. So, and where are we at? There we go. In this one, we're going to be 
adding in those teardrops in the peacock feather section, and then amplifying the rest of it just with uh, back and forth lines kind of going crazy. Love it. As we go. So, let's do it! We had some people that had to go. We understand. Thanks for being on with us, though. And just remember, you can always go back and watch this anytime. Yeah, we've been on for, oh my goodness, an hour and 17 minutes. We've been going. Ooh. These people, they, they're holding me accountable here yeah. for getting this done. Y'all should be with me every time I do a quote, I'd I get know. them done. <laughs> We need to move over just a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna travel and thin it. Yeah, I'm gonna come back, okay. I can't keep up with how fast he's going. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm just going to go wide for a little bit. <laughs> okay. And what stitches per inch are you in right now? I don't think this we... This is 14. 14. Okay, mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. I'm going to keep that wide and go down and answer some questions. Okay. I'm going to have a quad workout when this is said and done. You're going to have a what? Quad. Your quads because oh. I'm stepping up and down. Oh, that's oh, okay. I didn't hear what you were saying. Debbie, so yes, and Linda's choice would be thicker than if you bought just the 100% bleached white. Mm -hmm. the template starter kit sold out so I need to go check on that because there we have them so let me go check all that out well while she goes and does that we're just working through this feather as we see fit let's go this way I'm going to travel up this section and then around here and then back. Start to make your own make your own uh, song with it as you go. And my thing got caught again. See, y'all get to see the stuff that happens. So yeah, it got caught in that. I need to fix my threading, I guess. It got caught in that little piece again. That same exact spot. I probably need to fix something that I'm doing. But this happens to y'all at home. And then I can't hear if she's talking, if I'm talking on top of her. So I'm sorry if she is and I am. Uh, here we go. So we'll rethread that needle. I'm going to take a look at that in just a second, or maybe when, when, once we're done live and see why it's getting caught in that one same spot. But we get to just fix that real quick. Quick tie off again, since this is a since this is a uh, pan, uh, uh, wall hanging. I'm not super worried about bearing. Hopefully you weren't. She's back. Hopefully you weren't talking while you were over there. No. Okay, because I was talking and I can't hear you. We'd be talking over no, one I another. No, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. But I mean, that, that, so the template starter kits are back online. Sorry about that being sold out. We didn't expect to talk about it, so I didn't look to see that it got updated. <laughs> what kind of inventory control specialist I are you? I know, oh I know. Oh my gosh. But so I'm actually, thanks for telling us about that, Janet. <laughs> but they're back up now. So yeah, these feathers just- Everything on the just... go right now. 
These feathers just take some time because there's so much that goes into them. But once we get done with this one, I'm actually gonna, or once we get done with this one feather, I'm actually gonna roll it back and I wanna do some computerized quilting. Okay. And then I'm gonna let that run and we can sit and answer questions and do a little face-to-face -face Q and A. Okay. And I'm doing the stuff with my hands again, weren't I? <laughs> I'm sorry. I talk with my hands and the camera doesn't like it. It likes to focus on my hands. And then it's in, out, in, out, in, out. So you're just finishing the one feather? This one right here, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and then we can go over and do some computerized. It's kind of fun to show how you can mix freehand with computerization. And if you have a computerized machine, you can learn how to do freehand. It's super fun. Just get on a piece of fabric and just stitch away. Or a panel. Those are like the easiest things to practice on is panels. Because they mm -hmm. kind of give you some guidelines. And if you're okay. like me, you can just throw a border on it. We're good. Just throw a border <laughs> on it. When all, all right. else fails, throw a border on it. All right, I'm going to roll back real quick. I'm going to change my thread. Okay. Um, and then we'll do some computerized work on the outside. All righty. I will keep it over here. We're going to do it in the black section. Okay, I'm going to move this over then. Okay. Hate to shake it on you guys, sorry. Make sure I can get to it. Pretty sure I can. I love my power feed. Mm -hmm. All right, I got you over just the black area? Yeah, just the black okay. area. All right, so I'm gonna switch to a black micro quilter for the black area in the background. And then once we get it set up, we'll let it stitch. I trust the machine and we can chat about whatever quilting stuff related we need to. So, yeah, so we have some good questions here, too. So do you want to wait and answer them? Let's save those. Yeah. Okay, we are going to answer all your questions. Keep them coming. As soon as he starts the computerization, we're going to sit down and talk face-to-face -face with you and answer all these questions we haven't asked yet, answered yet. Do you want to, while I'm doing this, um, I'll pan the camera over there. Um, do you want to set that up in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're probably, we had, Janet was like, my battery died. I'm like, well, I'm looking at all my batteries now. Your battery died? No, hers did, so she had to go plug it in. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, ours is getting kind of low on this one, too. Ooh. We need to go plug it in while we're waiting. All right, so I switched out that thread uh, to that black micro quilter. I'm putting the belts back on to engage my autopilot on my M24. Um, I was quilting without the belts, so it was more free uh, and easier to move around. So I plopped those, so now I'm putting that black micro quilter on and we get to do some fun freehand work or freehand fun computerized work um, around here so i have this section i'm going to go ahead and map it out using what we call push pins so i'm going to push those little drop some little push pins around um, and kind of work through that section so i'm going to grab my machine and i'm going to turn my laser light on and i'm going to do about halfway so right here we can see that cool and I'm just going to begin to drop push pins around my section because I wanted to find the area that I'm working on to do this idea so I'll just click around as I go the more the better as we work around this do, 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 do. Ba, ba, da, ba. Mom left me. It's quiet in here. Normally, <laughs> I got the tunes jamming, <laughs> but because of copyright, <laughs> we could not do that. Okay, so I wanted I want the um, actual quilting to stop or the computer computerized part to stop right here. So I went a little too far. So I need to back up a few of my push pins real quick. So I'm just gonna do in Control Z on my keyboard. If you have an autopilot, just go back one. And it remembers that last one that I did, so I'm just going to jump right across and do my work around the top inner seam. So 
I'll click those all the way around. So if you're asking questions, we will get to all the answers in just a few minutes. Once Corey gets the machine going, we're going to sit down and talk with you. All the way to so there. if you haven't asked, think of some good ones because we're going to be there just answering questions. Woohoo! Okay. So now that I've done that, I am... Oh, no, don't do that. Okay, there we go. I am going to show y'all the screen, so bear with me real quick. I'm going to get a little jiggy jiggy around here. There we go. I'm going to turn this a little bit to better face y'all. Oh, golly. Act like I haven't done this before. That'll work. Okay. So this faint red line that I have right here, that's what I've clicked out with my push pins. And I'm going to grab my pattern that I want to use. I'm going to use this inner border piece to kind of fit in my section um, right here. But I wanted to kind of scale it down to get a better fit uh, for my placement for my pattern. So I've got it kind of scaled there. I don't mind. We're going to use a, a, a fill function or a, a masking function, excuse me, um, to, to fill in the sections here. But I wanted to get most of that corner pattern to fit in. But you can see I've got some missing here on the other side. So I need to add in the other portion of that corner. So I'm going to drop that right there. And I'm going to rotate it clockwise. And then I'm going to attach it to that piece. So I'll go into my group function and I'll attach it to that piece. It's a little off scale wise. So I should probably fix my scale first. Let's redo that whole thing. Let's do it back from scale. There we go. Take that one, rotate it. Now we're talking. Get it all scaled up nice first. Now they match together. Now that's the, that's the look we're going for. Get that corner all suited up and then just kind of play with scaling because I want these to fit in nicely. The rest of them I'm going to use my masking tool. And I'd like to see those pearls on that left side. So let's fit that in to see those pearls right there. Okay. There we go. All right. So then I'll select my little push pin section that I made, hop into my masking tool and build that. Select the mask, select the pattern, and mask everything. I want to get rid of everything on the outside. So I'll accept that. There it is. And that's what's going to be quilting. Now, if there's sections that I want to get rid of, like this right here isn't really necessary, in my opinion. I can hop into the nodes of the pattern, which are those right there. And I can delete whatever I want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of those sections. And I can just click, 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 get rid of the nodes that I don't want. Much better. And go back. There we go. So that's what we're going to quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And then we'll come back over here. And I'll get us set back up in the studio. And you're almost not done? Almost, yeah. Okay. So we'll bring up my thread. And tap continue. And I'm just gonna, I was fixing that first initial thing. I'm gonna turn off the laser light and I'm gonna adjust the speed a little bit because I don't want it going too crazy while I'm not here. And I'll be right in there with you. Okay. I'm coming on, I promise. There we go. All right. Yeah. Here we are. Hey, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed that so far. We had some questions here I want to answer before we got some people that have to leave for meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but Janet had a question about um, the Linus Choice batting. Mm -hmm. Does it the batting crease when it's folded over time? Um, it is 100% cotton batting, so mm -hmm. it will get a crease in it naturally. Mm -hmm. And because of the weight of it, though, it, once you open it up and lay it out, give yeah. it a little bit of time to breathe and chill and then it'll end up flattening back out yeah i have a couple of these that i put on my bed 
and I don't have any of the issues with the creases. Yeah. Like after the unfolding them, it lays just flat because yeah. of the heaviness of it. So yeah, yeah, that was a good question. Now, if you're looking for a batting that's not going to have a crease, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at wool. 100% wool. 100% wool yeah. um, does not have a memory for creases. Mm -hmm. So if you fold it up and you know, put it in a storage bin, take it back out, lay it flat, give it about five minutes, it'll poof, be ready to go. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Diane, yes, he is using regulated stitching. That's what he's been doing between, he's, he, most of it's been regulated and then he did a little bit in the- did a little bit in constant. The constant, but mm -hmm. then jumped back over to regulated. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's up? I'm what just going, I'm just letting you read it too in case I miss anything. I would love to see a class on ruler work. Uh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I have to add that to our, <laughs> we want to start doing these like once a month. Let us know what you think. Some, something like this, some event kind of like this, maybe yeah. once a month, once every other month. I was like, let's she's giving me that, <laughs> she's giving me that look like do not commit to anything. <laughs> Cause once you say it, it's done. <laughs> maybe so, once every other maybe month. Maybe once every other month. Um, we have a couple of different, um, panels or quilts that have uh, been donated for something like this. Yeah. So I've got a couple of different to choose from, um, kind of going in and that, that hummingbird one would be great for ruler work actually. Yeah, that really would be. That'd be a wonderful ruler work yeah. class. Should we show them? Yeah, we go should, grab the hummingbird. We, should show, them. we yeah. should show them. Deborah would love that. Oh yeah, Deborah's gonna love it. She, she said, did it. you change the needle when you went to the black thread? Um, from metallic to the black thread, yes. You, no, you, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> you normally would. I didn't change oh, it. Oh, <laughs> you normally would change the needle, Irene. It's stitching you just him. fine. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, We're just doing going this on with the it. go. But yeah, he would normally change it back to a 4.0. So this is one that was donated um, to the show um, to quilt up. It'll go back to the owner, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but this would be a great one to do ruler work on. Yeah, beautiful. So. She does such a good job putting these two pa she said paper piecing them paper together. Paper piecing them together, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a good so one. So Janet, he uses the Autopilot uh, from Innova. She's Autopilot asking Mach 3. Oh, sorry, Autopilot Mach 3 from Innova. Mm -hmm. um, that's the computer program that he's using. There was another... Oh, that was that. No, yeah. no, he already got it. Okay. <laughs> um, and then... Oh, Lori has a good one. Why are we always afraid of metallics? <laughs> We're not afraid. Not... A... We as in oh, the people. Oh, I think because it metallic a, gets a get doesn't get a good rap. It is it's, a it's very, very underrated. Well, it's a very fragile thread. It is very fragile. You just have to know how to use it and make sure you're doing those little tips, and that helps. If you just go from say an Omni or a Glide and go and you're straight going at to metallic, eighty percent on your machine, and then you put on metallic, it's going to break. It's going to pop. It's going to skip. Yeah. And then at that point, you're ready to take the spool and kick it out. I didn't get my leg up high enough. <laughs> kick it out of the door at that point. Yeah, so it's definitely one that you want to be able to take some practice, slow down your machine, slow down your stitching like he was talking about at the beginning. Make sure you're using that 5.0 needle. Um, ease a thread if you're having a little problem with tension going through all those guides. Mm -hmm. That helps it all. Yeah. And really just slowing down. Yeah. And then we had um, someone mention that they have a different machine. That this is great information. Yeah. The biggest thing we like to push here on the channel is, yes, we do sell the Anovas and we love them, but it doesn't matter what machine you have. No, it doesn't. Um, we are just happy that you're here yes. and that you're learning. That's, yeah. that's all that really matters to us. Yeah, because the freehand stuff we're showing you can be done on, on any machine. Any machine, yeah. And if you have a, any type of computerized machine, it's just teaching, showing you the ideas of what you could do with your computer, too. It's looking so good. It's a looking so I good? Can see are it. you looking at it? <laughs> Should we show it? It's done. Is it done already? Yeah, we'll, we'll flip it over there. Yeah, we'll, we can over. still talk, but y'all can see it. Look at it. Oh my gosh. That turned out really pretty. <laughs> that's stunning. I. Me. I am so smart. She said, give a class on the ruler work with that basic kit we sell. That's a good idea. Oh, with the template starter kit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great a really idea. That's a really good idea. Um, so with um, that same section, um, we talked about in the email that our team sent out was pattern choice. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the black portion that we just filled up with that beautiful design, I'll show it to you once more. That is a border corner set of patterns okay it's made to fit in the corner and then go down the borders of a quilt mm -hmm. so i saw that arc and i said oh my gosh it's a border corner we just have to mask it a little bit for it to fit within that section that's a good idea so kind of working with those patterns that you already have not going and looking and reinventing the wheel yeah making it work for you yeah so yeah. if you have a computerized machine if you would have a hand guided machine you could um, find paper patterns to do that, or you could draw your own pattern mm -hmm, and follow mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different things you could still do and still be able to do that freehand um, 
custom quilting mm -hmm. either way, whether you have a computerized machine or hand guided. No machine. question. Yeah, yeah. You def there's definitely things out there. And you brought up a really good idea. Mm -hmm. That darker black portion, mm -hmm. we could have used that ultimate marking pencil. Yes. and design something of our own to fit perfectly in there mm -hmm. as a free motion or even as a computerized quilter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then follow right on that. And then that once you quilt it, that stuff irons right off exactly. like it was never there. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So different, different. We have lots of videos on our channel that show you how to use all the different little tips that you can use, the, the chalk pencils, the the chalk, the pounce powder, using stencils, how to do the computerization with it, how to work it all together. Um, so we really hope you've enjoyed this. Corey, you going to move it back over there? Yeah, Diane switching. says now she wants an Anova. Well, I know where you can get one. We can make it happen. <laughs> All right, take it over there. Um, so over here, I've got this beautiful design. I'm going to trim my threads real quick, and then I'll get you a zoom in so you can see um, how it's really looking. Let's, where did I, did I take my scissors in there? There's some right there. By golly, I need to keep track of them. <laughs> I used to carry them around my neck, but then I left and went to the store one time and got a lot of questionable looks. So now I try not <laughs> to okay. wear them. That's okay. I used around. to have that magnetic thing and it was stuck on me. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then I'd go to leave like a show and go somewhere and they'd be like, "What is she? What is that?" <laughs> so just traveling around. That's what we do. And they had a question about what's the ultimate marking pencil. So maybe when you after you show your quilt, you can show that. <laughs> um, yeah, because I could just do it right here on it. Mm -hmm. um, so the let me get you a zoom in real quick of what that looks like. Well, bam. That turned out really so good. Cute. Yeah. I like that. With the texture right here too. Oh, it looks really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so the ultimate marking pencil is com like, it's basically compressed pounce powder. Yep, it if is. If I want to say mm -hmm. that. You said it right. Um, it comes with a pencil and a sharpener, but it just glides right on here. And I can iron this off, so I'm not really worried about doing it on here, but it just glides on this. Uh, section so I can kind of like follow what the stitching was here but you can kind of draw out anything that you'd like to and then you iron it off when it's done so it works really really well on there and as it gets dull like I said it comes with a sharpener so you can sharpen it up all right did you have anything else new that you wanted to show them or I want to do a little bit of ruler work down here at the bottom and I think I'll be done for the night okay um because that, that's touched on everything that we're going to do yeah Except for, I need to put gold back on. I'm going to put the gold thread back on. We're going to do in here, this is ruler work. And then we're going to come down to the bottom, and then I think I'm done. Okay. All right. So She's kicking me off. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. I'm just giving you a hard time. I could quilt all night long. I just, I'd run out of stuff to say, though. So we'd just have to put on some <laughs> classical music and... I'll fall asleep while we're quilting. Janice is very nice class. She's talked to us both on the phone multiple times. Um, nice to see us in person. So oh, we love you. talking to you guys. We don't always get to answer the phone, but when we do, we love talking to you and helping you out over the phone. Um, this, the, the stuff that Corey does and how he creates, and he just it's, it's just fun to watch. It just makes you a proud mom. Thanks, mother. <laughs> Pulling my thread right through. Um, here. And while you do that, we have a question. When you mask, mm -hmm. does the ANOVA recalculate the stitch path so you won't have lots of tie-ons and tie-offs? Correct. Um, whoa, that was a horrible way to answer that question. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, so when I did the mask here, it was initially supposed to start over here and head this direction, but the path of least resistance told it to start right here and then travel its way. Um, in the masking function, you have an ability to check mark it to do that, or if you want it to stop and tie off at every section, you can uncheck mark it and it will do that as well. Depends on what you're quilting. All righty. All right, belts are coming back off. Belts are coming off. Belts are coming off. So I will back into those. free hand mode. Free hand mode. You're about to say free motion. I was about to say free motion. <laughs> free something. Yeah. Free something. All right. Move these out of the way, and then put the machine down there. Where are you going to be at? So I can I'm going to pop on a ruler base, and we're going to be right here okay. in this section. And I won't need this handle, so I can loosen it and lift it for you. Perfect. So you have a better look. Folks will need. love that, so they can see better. I don't need two handles for ruler work. Um, I'm going to take a 4 by 8 ruler for this. Your base? And my ruler base, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am You'll here only try you. one time to do it without a ruler base. <laughs> and you won't do that again. And you won't do that again. 
I say that and here I was about to try it again. I know. <laughs> and then you won't do it again. And then I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Until the next time. Until the next time. So you're live, filming, trying to stay on task. Uh, and then you we know me. It. I'm like I'm like a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel? I no, I don't I can't stay on task. Y'all know that. I'm all over the place. Okay. Wait, you left me. I'm coming. Oh, we I'm just sorry. have Liz and Mac Petty saying how much they love your videos. Oh, well, thank y'all. All Very the ones sweet. you've done in the past and in the... Now, okay, I'm stepping up again. You're doing great, buddy. Oh. Um, I think we have to be live in the morning, too. you got to get me out of here. i got to get... I'm tired. Oh, that is right. We do have a good morning at like yeah. 2 in the morning, don't we? <laughs> I didn't think this one all the way through, no. did I? Oh, well, they're, the people are having fun. That's all that matters. We don't need sleep. Already. We quilt all night. Okay. Let's make sure we're back in regulated mode. We should be... I say that, and then I decided to go crazy. There we go. Cool. So we're back in regulated. Needle down. I'm going to do some ruler work here. I'm going to do straight lines um, in this section. And then when I get up to this middle portion here, we're going to kind of curl down here to fill this in and then travel on our way. And I'm kind of making that up as I go, being honest with you. So taking that... Shifting the ruler, traveling up when we get about halfway, drop the ruler. Pick the ruler back up, needle down, and turn. And if you're joining us late, normally when you would use a ruler, yes, you would have a ruler foot on. But for sake of time, and Corey knows how to use the open toe with a ruler, um, we're just keeping them one foot on so we can go back and forth from what he's doing. But we do want you to know that, yeah, normally you would put your ruler foot on there until yes. you get used to it. Yeah, please do. Because it only takes one time of turning the ruler the wrong way and getting that caught in there and chipping it. Yeah, mm -mm -mm. so. You'll find a whole new set of words you didn't even know you knew. <laughs> So this is just back and forth again, having those uh, grip dots on helps me and I'm just working through this section as I go. Everything going okay, Mom? Yeah, I'm gonna just check the me messages one more time. Wendy said, thank, thank us both for the inspiration. Swore that she was not gonna do ruler work when she does free motion, but she has a quilt coming up and she thinks she might give it a shot, Corey. Woohoo! Really works fun. Yeah, and I resend said your panto vision video. I can't even talk, I'm getting tired. This is what happens when you wake up at six in the morning. Your panto vision video is great. Oh, thank you. So. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tie off here because um, we get the general idea of what's happening. And when you're done with the ruler work, they just wanna see the base one more time. Just oh. what it looks like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got one more set here and then okay. we'll be. How are we doing on time? What time is it? It's 7.15. 7.15? Yeah. I thought it was like 7.11 a second ago. Well, that's only four minutes. Well, I know, but th okay, that didn't help my case. <laughs> that, wasn't what, case. that wasn't what I was trying to say. <laughs> yep. Okay. Time so is definitely going by because we're having fun. Yes, it is. All right, so we're down here now. I'm going to zoom out just a hair. And the, the benefit of uh, doing stitch in the ditch first in sections um, is that you can bounce around this quilt as you please and as, as you want to um, without having to worry about where am I going. Um, 
Did that make sense? Mm, not really. <laughs> so doing that stitch in the ditch ahead of time stabilizes the quilt. So then I can go from way over there working on something to come way over here to work on something to go way over there to work on something to bounce right back over here. Since it's already stabilized, then you can bounce around the quilt easier as long as you're within your throat space. Did that make sense? That made sense. Oh, go me. So basically stabilize before you move. Yeah. That way, because I'm easily bored, so I can be able to bounce up to this section and go, okay, now I want to go work on that, or now I want to go work on this, or now I want to go work on that, or now I want to change threads, so or he I did, want a um, cookie. So that she was noticing that you don't use the ANOVA tie-off feature because you just manually do the tie-off with the I, handle. Yeah, I just manually do the tie-off with the handle. Yep. The tie-off feature is cool, but I just do the handle button. It just works better for me, in my opinion. Um, so for this one, we're just going to use ruler work. We're doing 45-degree uh, lines through what's already here. Um, I did kind of calculate where my uh, base was going to hit and it was going to hit right about here so I'm going to grab my ultimate marking pencil that has ran away from me now it's back. <laughs> um, I took a I'm going to go trip. ahead and just give myself kind of a marking um, to follow and I want to find it at some intersection so I can bounce back and head back the same way. So if I'm coming down, 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 down. So Barbara, it's a good question. Right about right he doesn't he does not stabilize the whole quilt. He just stabilizes the area in his throat space that he's gonna work in. And then when he rotates up, he'll stabilize the area that he's gonna work in, right? Did I mm -hmm. say that right? Uh, for a larger quilt, yes. For, a larger for this quilt. tiny little panel, I went ahead and stabilized a little bit more. You say but but for say for a larger quilt, you but would yeah, stabilize just, as you go. I go as I go, yeah. So well, okay, so for the smaller quilt, he did stabilize ahead of yeah. time. Sorry. Got that one. All right, so now we're going to do our ruler work, going at that 45 degree angle, kind of setting up first. And then turn the ruler. Set up and go. Turn the ruler. Biggest part, the biggest part about ruler work to get a good steady hand on it is use your thumb on one end and your pinky on the other to get good grip. Use your other fingers to lay on top of it, and that'll keep you from moving as much. So no matter where you're at in the ruler, you can see my pinky's on one end and my thumb's on the other. And then we'll go this way, and we just work around as we go. Remembering to always keep in mind where the end of your throat space is. Uh, with the ruler base on, because putting that ruler base on does change how much quilting area you have. And you don't want to get yourself into a pickle. So this last bump right here is where we're going to get to. So we're going to be able to get to this point, and then we have to travel back. So I'll hold that on, get to that point, like that. And then I'm just going to take half of that line and then travel back. And then when you roll, those points will meet back together again, so no big deal. This is turning out so pretty. I can't wait to see the finished product. Neither can I. <laughs> well, you're almost halfway done. Basically, if I if I would have stayed on one thing the whole time, yeah, I'd be halfway done by now. Yeah. Well, it's good but to I show just, all the I'm different I'm trying techniques. to give you different techniques so you don't get bored watching me do the same thing for 30 minutes. Yeah. That's going to look really good. But you the do have to tell yourself. The owner's going to love it. Yeah. I hope she will. She will. It's beautiful. Right. Especially going with the metallic thread, it just kind of gives it that that, that extra e flair. Yeah. Um, so I did that little bit of cross hatching in here. You could definitely go in and add more line work, which I might do, um, or you could do line work here, uh, which I might do as well, depending on how much uh, uh, time, energy, and charisma I have um, when I'm getting into it. <coughs> but you definitely have that option. Um, the so cross you have, even just even the cross hatchings look nice too. Even the cross hatch by itself looks nice. Maybe doing the stitch in the ditch across the top here yeah. and down the bottom here. Yeah. Might just just stabilize just just like a little more, pop a little bit a little more. more. Um, and then right here in this section, you could just do simple arcs. Um, you wouldn't have to do anything crazy. Uh, just a little bit of arcing um, in that. And you could you know even cross hatch through that if you want, or you could just do like a continuous arc. Oh, do I have time to show them that real quick? Um, go for it. Okay, we're gonna do a, a continuous curve in here. Well, we like to do that on the channel. So let me grab my ruler before I get too crazy. This is the thing about 
any type of video or class with me, I always, as I'm going, I'm like, ooh, what about this? Ooh, what about this? And then I'm going to go home, I'm going to sleep on it tonight, and then I'm going to think of 30 different other ideas we should I have know, done. right? <laughs> so let's get you a little closer. I'm going to do a continuous curve in this one just to keep it moving, and we'll be able to match ourselves back up. Um, well, I guess we'll zoom out just a hair. There we go. Yeah. And so this is just going to be arcing motion. Um, I don't have two handles right now because one's out of the way so you can see it a little better. So uh, forgive me if it's not as perfect as I want it to be. But this is just going to be a slight curve going against the direction of the design. Add a little bit of flare in there. Coming down to the end of where we are. We're going to travel down, back and then up, down. So I think when you're done with this top part, we should kind of let the camera zoom out, move the machine, and show the different techniques on what you did computerized, what you did uh, freehand, just kind of a glance over, okay. and then answer any more questions, and then let them have their night back. OK, sounds good. So this little continuous curve, it didn't take away from the design that was already there. Um, it just kind of amplified it a little bit more and then it made a quick, easy way for you to fill that up super duper fast. Boom. All right, I'm gonna use the tie off feature. I did, that's actually kind of convenient. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'll pull up my thread and I will uh, pull up my bobbin and I'll trim this away. There's my scissors. And then we'll move the machine out of the way like Diana said, or like Mom said. Um, and we'll kind of give you an idea of what we did. Oh, and then you said someone wanted to see the ruler base? Yeah, you just show it really quick, okay. just what it looks like. So ruler base on the Innova machine is that acrylic plate right there that plops on really easy. Uh, different machines have different ruler bases. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what it looks like. Yep. All righty. So let's just kind of show them the whole look of the quilt. Hi. Set that over there. Get a little bit closer. I'm gonna take this off, so a sorry if I shake, shake y'all. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Um, so right here we had that continuous arc work. Here we did that cross hatching with our ruler following the lines that were already there. Um, before we got started, I actually did this border. I found this uh, border pattern by Kim Diamond that I had made it kind of look like peacock feathers so and that I was computerized that. portion that was computerized yeah i did not <laughs> do that freehand um then we followed the golly this looks pretty <laughs> now that <laughs> now i'm like not on a machine it. doing it um this is that metallic thread up close that's what we kind of did following what was already there again i didn't try to be perfect directly in the lines i just accentuated it because when the shadow light hits it from the sun that comes out of the window in the west or the east one of those Directions. Depends on the time of day. Depends on the time of day. <laughs> um, it'll shadow and show some really cool dimension. Then we have the background quilting. That we did. Oh, there it is. Can you see it really good? Yeah, that's cool. Even though the. Oh no, you're gonna see it in a second. You'll see it on your screen in a oh, second. Okay, that's like I can't see. Um, but it has beautiful dimension there, and I'll show you the metallic as it shines. So when the light hits it a very particular way. Just tell me when to turn it back on. Okay. It's looking. Okay, you can turn it back on. Again, I apologize for the motion. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. Here's that computerized background that we did. I've got some lint all over this. I need to get a quilt sponge and clean that up. <laughs> um, and then I've got my ultimate marking pencil. But there's that background that we did, just masking that background pattern that we had. Um, we did the accentuating work right here down the chain of the frame. We did the work in the peacock. We did a lot tonight. Yeah. Did a work in the peacock here, filling up the feathers and the clamshell as we go. And then this is kind of where we started as well with our frame motion, just filling up that space. Just okay. like that. All right, Mom, you want to send us back over? I am. Let's go on back to the studio. Oh, okay, buckwheat. All right, that was so fun. Did you have fun? Like two hours of quilting with Corey. How about that? Oh, bless it. <laughs> I had fun. It was a lot of fun. You got yeah. to see that 
it's, you know, thread breaks just don't happen to you. Yeah, they happen to You know, everyone. stumbling and thinking, what am I going to do here doesn't just happen to you. Yeah, and tension, a um, little bit of tension. A little bit of tension. It doesn't just go. happen to you. Yeah. Um, it's just those things that just pop up mm -hmm, and they just exactly. come as they go. I think you've earned a cookie, so after you're oh, done, you can have a cookie. cookie. <laughs> or I can have a cookie on a mic because I'll be awkward. I know, right I'll devour now. it. Then we'll definitely give you that. So, um, anyway, let's see. We had a, one more question. Do you want to answer that? Um, how do you adjust your attention when changing thread in the middle of a project? Or more clearly, how do you test it? Um, wonderful question. Yeah. Because I played with these threads before we went live, um, I knew that switching between threads was just one turn of tension for me, yeah. one way or the other. So if you plan on bouncing between threads throughout a quilt that are different weight, mm -hmm. if you're doing the same color thread, the same type of thread, you're it fine. Matter, yeah. But if you're bouncing different weights of threads, like a micro quilter, a bottom line, a sew fine, I talk a lot with my hands, yeah. um, then you would have a little separate uh, test piece of fabric. Yeah, like a quilt sandwich to quilt test sandwich it out. To the side before you put that quilt on. Yep. Test out where your tension needs to be. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the idea of, okay, I need to put it here when I'm using this one or here when I'm doing this one. Um, throughout the process so that yes. way you don't have to worry about it definitely let us know if you've watched this if you want Corey to do this again we were talking about that earlier how we want to kind of maybe do this every other month um, we've got a few projects people have brought in for us to do it with so um, hey just let us know if you enjoyed it um, we enjoyed it so I had fun it all was right. a fun way to, well, to end my Thursday exactly let's let them go so we can let them have a night and we can go home and sleep and be back in the morning mm -hmm. but I just have a question. Oh, so there was someone that someone was talking about uh, the importance of timing on a home machine. Oh, okay. The needle timing. That's good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All righty. I think we're good. All right. Alrighty. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight yes. and taking your time uh, to go through this process um, with us. And I think we've had a great time. And if you came on later, it'll be recorded and you can go back and watch it. Yes. So. Um, and then also let's give a round of applause and a shout out to the uh, craft services, the uh, studio director, the camera lady, the idea lady, the question lady, the camera angle lady, the watching lady. Right here, this woman. Phenomenal, y'all. So round of applause Thank for her because I you. just sat there and played with the machine. I know, she made but sure you it did happened. Great. No, but he did an awesome job too. I don't have that talent. So I think it's, we're you a good have team. Talent. We have a good team. Have a Not as talent. good as that, though. You have talent. I, I do have my own talent. You can talents. do QuickBooks like no one else's business. I That's can. I don't know that. That's okay. a talent. So <laughs> there you go. We'll do a YouTube video on your quick books. There we go. All right. <laughs> all all right, right, guys. Um, thank you all again so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning for Good Morning LEQ. Bye. Bye.